Stay all day. Stay all You are now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. That is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of wait for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unified philosophy that is called work on your game my name is Dre Baldwin also known as Dre all day and welcome to the show and today's topic is how to stop conforming how can you stop conforming and actually stand out the way that you were designed to in your life or any of you who actually want to do that you want to stand out the way you were supposed to stand out since you are unique from every other uh, living thing out here how can you actually start doing it and stop doing what you see everybody else doing, which is indeed conforming? Before we get into that, first of all, daily motivation text message. I send that out every single day for free to everyone who's in my text community. If you didn't know about it, now you know. Here's what you could do about it. Text me at the number 267-970-6628. And every day when I send that text out, you will then be in my community and you'll be receiving that text. And you can actually respond to any one of those texts and you'll be texting me directly. My number again, 305-384-6894. Send a text to that number right now because your phone is in your hand. Now, this topic, how to stop conforming. First of all, let's get clear on what it means to conform. The definition of conform means to comply with rules, standards, or laws. Now, what we're talking about here today is not about breaking the laws, but it is about defining the rules and standards if and when your goal is to stand out. If your goal is to stand out, then you can't follow the same rules that everybody else is following. You cannot uh, live by the same standards that everyone else lives by because then you will be just like them. And if that's your goal, then this ain't the episode for you. This episode is about not doing that. Okay, so if your goal is to stand out, if you want to blend in and go, if you want to not blend in and you want to actually be noticed, listen to this. If you want to blend in and go unnoticed for the rest of your life, this is not for you. But everybody else, make sure you listen up. Point number one, and I would suggest you take notes on this. You should take notes on every episode here of this show because you're not going to remember 98% of what I said by this time tomorrow. But anyway, all that said, let's get into points. Point number one, topic once again is how to stop conforming. First of all, let's be clear why this topic is about not conforming. Because most of the time when we conform in life, it is not because we necessarily want to. Most of the actions that we take in life, I talked about this in my book, Work On Your Game, is that most of our actions are habitual and unconscious. We are not even consciously thinking about what we're doing. And we have made such a habit out of doing these things that we don't even realize that we're doing them. We kind of do them without really thinking and we just do them automatically. That's what a habit is, right? Most of our actions, most of our thoughts are habitual. We are only, only about 15% of what we do and think on a day-to-day -day basis is really conscious. Everything else kind of just flows naturally from us in a habitual way that we don't even think about. So when we conform 85% of the time, it's not because we decided consciously to do so. We just do it because that's what we're used to doing. It's, a, it's an involuntary response. It's not necessarily because we think following the crowd is the best possible option. It's often because we feel the social pressure, which is ingrained in us as social creatures, we feel the social pressure to do what we see everybody else doing. And because at the same time, we never consciously consider whether doing something other than what everybody else is doing might be a better idea. You know, it might be a better idea if I didn't conform and I didn't follow the crowd here, but we don't even consider it, so we just do what we see everybody else doing. We never really think about it. And even if we do think about it, we don't think about it long and hard enough in such a way that we ever actually get around to doing it. Or if we do think about it, we usually butt up against the social pressure, the peer pressure, the fear that we would feel if we were to dare go against the grain and do something other than what we see everybody else doing and then we change our mind and we go right back to doing what we were already doing before which is indeed conforming. So we never really consider non-conformity and that's why I'm talking about it here today to bring it to your conscious and get it out of your unconscious. We are conditioned and groomed from children to look around, see what everybody else is doing and to copy them. All right, that's what we're conditioned to do. And this is not necessarily always a bad thing. There are times when if you look around, see what everybody else is doing and you follow it, it will probably get you to a good space in terms of 
in terms of just taking care of the, the basic necessities of social conformity and getting on with other people or you know, doing what you need to do at work, doing what you need to do at school, on a, a sports team, you just follow what everybody else is doing for the most part. You can blend in, not be bothered, you won't rock the boat, and you could get to at least, in, let's just say, an average level of accomplishment, an average level of achievement. You can do that by merely conforming. If you were to drop me into the workplace of any entry level job that some of you who are listening to this right now, you're working at a job that's entry level. And when I say entry level, what I mean is the kind of job where you don't have to have any specialized knowledge to get hired. So I worked at a whole bunch of entry level jobs. I worked at McDonald's. I worked at a water ice stand. I worked at uh, restaurants. I worked as a bus boy. I worked as a, a maintenance guy. I worked at a movie theater taking orders at the concession stand. Those are the kind of jobs that are entry level. In other words, they're the kind of jobs that anyone could anyone theoretically could get hired and they could be executing on a job fairly satisfactorily within a week. All right, that's an entry level job. You don't have to bring any skills with you except the ability to you know, read and write and understand the native language. If you work at a job like that, if I, you were to drop me in, any of you who works at an entry level gig, you were to drop me in there and working alongside you, within a week, I'd be doing that job pretty much at the same level that you do the job. Why? Because all I had to do is look around at what everybody else is doing and just follow it. If I just conform to what everyone else is doing, if you were to drop me at McDonald's and gave me no training, just put me in the back with all the other cooks who were making the, the double cheeseburgers and the quarter pounders, within a week, all I had to do is just let one of them tell me, all right, when this happens, do this. When that happens, do that. Just push this button right here, then move this right there. I could within a week, but it wouldn't even take me a week. I could figure out exactly how to do that job well enough that you wouldn't know how long I've been working there because all I'm doing is just following the process and conforming to what everybody else is doing. So conforming is not necessarily, again, a negative thing. Conforming does not mean you're going to fail in life and you're going to fall flat on your face and, and curl up in a ball and die. But it does mean that you will blend in with everybody else. And again, this topic is about doing the opposite of blending in. Since we are conditioned and groomed to look around, see what everyone else is doing is copying them. We do this in school. We do it at work is at least at the entry level jobs that many of us start out with and many of us never graduate past this point we just do this for our whole lives so you go to school for how many years you went to school for 12 years and you were taught to conform then you get out of school at least 12 years then you get out of school and you get into an entry level job you conform and do whatever they're telling you to do and then most people this is pretty much it this is, that's pretty much the whole process they just repeat that process for the next let's say you get you get into the workforce or around age let's say 25 it takes you a, a year or two to figure out where you're going you get into the workforce around 25 then you do that for another what 50 years I know 65 is a normal retirement age, but people are living longer now because we're healthier. We got more technology. So let's say 75. So you basically live that life. You conform for the next 50 years and then you're dead. And then it's over and everybody forgets about you two hours after your funeral's over. That's pretty much how it goes for most people. And the better you conform, the more you get rewarded. In school, right? who, do, who gets the biggest rewards in school? The people who are best at conforming to the process that you are being taught. So to go against this requires a certain amount of deconditioning, so to speak. And that's the topic here today. That's my aim here today and actually every day on the show. Point number two. Today's topic, once again, is how to stop conforming. The easiest way to stand out in anything that you do is to look around at what everybody else is doing and do the opposite. Earl Nightingale talked about this in his um, audio tape called Lead Field, which he made way back before I was even alive. But this is a tape that any of you can go find us on whatever streaming service you subscribe to, Spotify, Apple, uh, YouTube Music, Amazon Music, YouTube. You can look, look this up. It's called Lead the Field. And the author's name is Earl Nightingale, or the speaker. His name is Earl Nightingale. And listen to that audio tape. And it'll, it'll be set up just like an album would be for a rapper or a singer. And this is one of the things Earl Nightingale talked about. That if you want to stand out from the rest of the world, all you got to do is look around at what everybody else is doing and do the opposite, even if you have no idea what you're doing. Why? Because most people conform. Therefore, most people become average. Therefore, if you want to not become average, the best you give yourself the highest probability of not being average by not doing what the average people are doing. And if you look around and you see, quote unquote, everybody doing something, there's a good chance most of those people are average. So do the opposite of them and you already put yourself in a winning position. Or you made yourself eligible to win. There's a study done. And I know I wrote about this. I might have written about it and not spoken about it, but I might have spoke about it as well. But 
And there's a study done, Earl Nightingale talked about this in his other audio tape, the one that made him famous, it's called The Strangest Secret. And I've talked about that on the show. The Strangest Secret is a 36 minute audio. You should definitely look this one up as well on your favorite streaming service or YouTube or just look it up on Google, it's easy to find, it's free. Listen to it, it's called The Strangest Secret. And one of the things he talked about was this study that was done where they followed a bunch of men over the course of their entire lives, from the time they were age 18 till the time that they were around 65, 70 years old. And from age 18 to 65, this is what happened. 1% of those men by age 65 was rich. 4% of the men were financially well off. So that's 5%, right? Another 15% of those men were in good financial shape. They were taken care of financially. They were in good space on their own accord. By their, through their own efforts, they were well taken care of financially. So that, that encompasses 20% of the men. Of the remaining 80%, Half of them were dead. The other half were still working because they had to. And the rest of them were, half of them were dead. A percentage of them were still working because they had to. And other percentage of them were financially dependent on their children or on the government or charitable donations in order for them to live. The point being, you look at this, this is the 80-20 rule. 20% of the men that they followed were in good shape financially after 40 years, 40 or so years of working. The other 80% were not in good shape financially or they were dead after 40 years of working. Why is this? And Earl Nightingale's thesis of The Strangest Secret was all about the fact that most people conform and that's why most people end up in 80%. He was just using income as a, a, an, a canvas for his bigger point. And I'm doing the same thing by using his example. So. The easiest way for you to stand out is to look around at what everyone else is doing and don't do that. This sounds simple because it pretty much is, right? And is anyone confused as to what, this, what you would need to do to execute on this point? But it's very difficult to do. And let me tell you why it's difficult. Because as we already talked about, we've been conditioned from children. If you're 27 years old, you've been conditioned since you were old enough. How old is a child when they can start understanding words and talking back? Two, three, three years old? So you got 20 plus years of conditioning of people telling you and convincing you and influencing you to conform. And now here I am in 20 minutes trying to tell you not to. All right, this is the reason why most people can't do it. It's very difficult to undo the conditioning that's been done unto you all of your life, all of your life. Even when you can logically agree that that conditioning is not getting you where you want to go, you'll still keep doing the thing that you know is not working because you are emotionally attached to it. This is, this is one of the, the conundrums of the human animal, that uh, the more people figure this out and crack this nut on how to undo this, uh, those people become pretty famous and they, they get paid pretty well. I'm on, I'm on the path to figuring that out. That's why I'm talking about this right now. Figuring it out even better and better and better to the point that I can help uh, more and more average people understand it. They're above average people who listen to this show, so you all can understand it. But I got to get the people who don't even look for shows like this to be able to understand it. And that's when I'll become more and more famous. Uh, this is just as a side note. <laughs> to make the, the more... The, more average the person you can help understand your point, the more people you can reach, if you understand what I'm saying. But this sounds pretty simple, right? Just don't conform, don't do what everybody else is doing. But we've been conditioned to do this. Social cues have taught us this. Social norms have taught us this. School taught us this. Your work environment, probably, wherever you work, it probably teaches you this. To do the opposite of what everybody else is doing, you know what this triggers inside of us? It triggers stress, because you're going against the grain, fear, anxiety. Why? Because doing the opposite of everyone else draws attention to you for all the quote wrong reasons, close quote. You know, you're drawing all this attention because you're not doing what everybody else is doing. Any of you ever watched the TV show Seinfeld? And I'm sure many of you have. It was a very popular show. There was that episode where, who was it? I believe it was Kramer. He was going on the, I think it was the AIDS walk or the cancer walk. It was one of those. It was there. The show was based in New York. I think most of you know that. And Kramer, who's one of the characters on the show, he was going out to support. It was either the AIDS walk or the cancer walk. It's like it's big walk that everybody does. Everybody gets together and they go on this walk through the city and they walk X number of miles and they all wear like a pink shirt or a red shirt or whatever color it is for the cause. And they wear a, a, a ribbon or a button and they donate money. And the whole point is to 
uh, raise awareness about the fight against this disease or this problem or whatever it is and people donate money and it's just a big feel good thing to raise awareness that we're all trying to fight against this disease that's hurting people so kramer goes on his walk i can't remember what it, which one it was but whatever it was the cause aids or cancer is one of those kramer is walking just like all the other people but he decided when he's on the walk that he doesn't want to wear the ribbon on his shirt everybody has on his ribbon that shows they're part of the walk i'm part of the cause it's basically a uh, is it basically a virtue signal is what it was before we called it virtue signaling but that's what it is not in a negative way but that's what it is a virtue signal and kramer decided i'm going to go on a walk because i support the cause but i just don't want to want, want to wear the button on my shirt so he didn't wear the, the ribbon so he's walking around without the ribbon and everywhere he goes along the path of the walk, you know, it's thousands of people out there walking. They all ask him, hey, why don't you have on a ribbon? Finally, somebody points him out, why don't you have on a ribbon? And then somebody else notices, why don't you have on a ribbon? And they all start arguing about the ribbon or they're arguing at Kramer about not wearing the ribbon. And it's like it, it, this group that he's walking with all for this positive cause, it be, they become a mob because the mob is trying to socially pressure him into putting on the ribbon. And he doesn't want to put on the ribbon. And it become, it's funny, but at the same time, it, it was very, um, it was an omen for what we ended up having over the last couple of years with you know, things like masking and jabs is the exact same thing. It's the, it is the, it's an example of what happens when you go against the grain and you are not doing what everybody else is doing. Even if what you're doing is for the most part benign and not hurting anybody, but because you are not conforming, people have a problem with it. And that stress, that fear, that anxiety is a real thing that we all feel because we're drawing attention to ourselves again for going against the grain and people don't like that. So understand this is what you're signing up for when you don't conform. Point number three, today's topic once again is how to stop conforming. Number three, stop being lazy. This is how you stop conforming. Yes, you heard me. Stop being lazy. When you conform, you are telling your brain to take a vacation because you're going to merely follow conventions and do what you see everyone else doing. That's what happens when you conform. You're telling your brain, don't think. Don't, we don't need any conscious thought from you. You go ahead and take the day off. I'm just going to do whatever I see everybody else doing without really thinking about, critically thinking about, does this make sense for me and for my situation? But again, if we look at the law of averages, we know that what everyone else does is usually the thing that gets you average or below average results. Again, this is the, the crux here and the, this is the conundrum of humans being human. That we default to following the crowd while at the same time consciously understanding that following the crowd will get us average or below average results. But we do it anyway. Is that what you want? So this is a conscious question. I'm asking your conscious brain to answer this question. Is that what you want? Now we know that the answer, especially for people who listen to a show called Work On Your Game, that is not what you want. So here's what I'm telling you to do. Turn on the light switch in your brain. Turn it back to on. It's set to off right now. Turn it on and challenge yourself to make a decision that is independent of what you see everyone else doing. I know I make this sound so simple, but it's not, as I just told you on point number two. This is the first step to nonconformity. This will require a high level of discipline because you have to remember to remember, at least at first, before it becomes a habit. Then you have to have a high level of confidence because there will be people who give you dirty looks or a metaphorical dirty look because you're not doing what they're doing. You're not conforming. You have to believe in yourself strongly enough to stick with it, even though the crowd doesn't like the fact that you're not doing what they're doing because you're going against the grain. You got to believe in yourself enough to follow through with it. You're going to need a higher level of mental toughness because people are going to look at you funny, talk at you funny, and might even try to do funny things towards you simply because you're not doing what they're doing. Just like the Kramer incident in the, in the episode of Seinfeld. You're doing something other than what they are used to doing. You are not following the crowd. You are going against the grain. And when you go against the grain and you don't conform and your non-conformity is on display to people who are used to conforming, Here's two things that are happening. First of all, you're going against the grain. Those social norms that they are used to, they're going to try to enforce them upon you. That's first of all. But here's the other thing that happens when you don't conform is that your nonconformity is like holding up a mirror to the people who are conformists. You're showing them, hey, you know what? There's another way to live here besides just following what everybody else does. And because you are doing that, it makes them uncomfortable that they see you know what? I could be doing things a different way because this person is showing it to me. You're holding it right up to their faces that they are conformists. And 
The smarter the person is, the less they want that mirror held up to their face. Now, a stupid person, they won't even notice you're holding the mirror up. But a really smart person, are those are the people who get really uncomfortable when you show them how much of a conformist they are because they think they're so damn smart that they would think they would never fall victim to conformity. But that's exactly what they're doing. So this is another uh, social uh, trigger that you're pulling every time you don't conform. So understand you're signing up for all of this if you follow my advice here today. So I'm, I'm telling you this, I'm sending you into the lion's den. You just gotta be mentally tough enough and you gotta have balls to deal with it. All that being said, let's recap today's class, which is how to stop conforming. The definition of conformity is to comply with rules, standards, or laws. And again, this is about defining the rules and standards if and when your goal is to stand out. So anybody who wants to blend in and go unnoticed is not for you, but for everybody else. Point number one, let's be clear why this topic is about not conforming. Because most of the time when we conform, it's not because we necessarily want to, it's because we are just going off our default mindsets. It's the social pressure that we have been, have had conditioned into us since we were children. All the years that we went to school, many of you in your workplaces, we just follow what everybody else is doing. Point number two, the easiest way to stand out in anything is to look around at what everyone else is doing and just do the opposite. Since most people are average, if you do the opposite of the average, you can probably be above average at least, worst case scenario. This sounds pretty simple, but it's difficult because we are social creatures and we are driven by social cues and social norms. And when you go against that grain, people will come at you, just like Kramer in that episode of Seinfeld. Point number three, stop being lazy. When you conform, you, and you are basically telling your brain to take a vacation and just follow conventions and do what everybody else is doing. So I'm telling you to turn your brain, turn the light switch back to on, challenge yourself to make critical thinking decisions that are independent of what everybody else is doing. This is your first step and it require a higher level of discipline, confidence, and mental toughness and initiative because people will push back against you when you're going against the grain and you're holding up a mirror to them, showing them how much of a follower and a sheep they are and they don't like that. And the smarter the person, the more they will dislike it and the more balls and courage you will need to keep executing. All this said, two things for you to do now. First of all, go to workonyourgameuniversity.com and join my mastermind program so you can work with me directly. That's the next step in this process. That is workonyourgameuniversity.com so you can join my group program or work with me one-on-one. -on -one. And the other thing is to text me at 305-384-6894 so you can get my daily motivation free of charge straight to your phone every single day. Work on your game. Dre all